Hi, welcome to Nothing Yet Studios. This is Colby, and uh, and this is, as you can see in the title, uh, kind of me addressing the future of the channel and uh, the changes that I'm going to be going through. Um, a year or so ago, I came out with a video. It was uh, it was probably a year and a half ago, and it was a uh, video on on church church stuff. And at the beginning of that video, I believe I said something about how we wanted Nothing Yet Studios to be more than just a gaming platform. We wanted to talk about stuff. We wanted to be able to do reviews of stuff, you know, whatever. If I, if I have a beer that just, like, blows my mind, I want to be able to get on and be like, hey, this beer blew my mind. Speaking of beers that blew my mind, um, you got St. Peter's Cream Stout. Um, if you like Cream Stouts, this thing is a beast. It's super, super good. But uh, it is from uh, Suffolk, UK, so you might not be able to just pick that up at your local uh, Walmart. <laughs> I had to get it from a specialty store, but it was really good. But, uh, I, you know, if I wanted to sit down and do a review of, of that beer, I, I want to be able to do that. If I want to sit down and do a review of coffee or a knife or a gun or whatever, I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to just tell you guys what's on my mind about certain things that I find interesting or important. In this particular time in my life, um, there's a lot going on in the world, and I I don't hear a lot of people, you know, talking about it from a very moderate or a very um, realistic standpoint. Um, if you look at politics right now, it's a blame game. It's it's well, you can't vote for Trump; he's a racist. Or you can't vote for Hillary; Benghazi. You know, just back and forth. Like nobody really wants to address any any actual issues. Nobody wants to talk about anything. You know, I was listening to a debate actually last night, and to those guys who were there, um, hi, uh, y'all actually kind of encouraged me to do this with some of the encouragement that y'all gave me after I was talking about some stuff. But uh, but the debate I was hearing last night was just people just kind of like hating on people back and forth, and no real like conversation was happening. No one was really discussing things. No, nothing was being challenged. You know, somebody would just throw up an, uh, an opposition to somebody and, and the other side who liked that one person would say, no, 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 your person's worse. And that's all I hear anymore. So um, I'm just kind of tired of sitting on the sidelines. Um, I, I've been told by a lot of people that I have uh, good views on stuff, that, that they like the, my views, that they want to see videos. I'm sure people are going to disagree with my views, and that's that's great. I mean, that's kind of the benefit of living in America today is that if you have a view that's different than mine, you're welcome to talk about it. And um, if I have a view that's different than yours and I say I think you're wrong or you think I'm wrong, we can say, hey, I feel like you're wrong. Um, I don't see a lot of people that are willing or able to disagree with someone about something and then be peaceful with them and peaceable. Um, people seem to get very emotionally attached, very personal with things, uh, especially in politics. It doesn't make any sense. So um, before I get into that, because that's a video for another day, I want this video to be kind of s like short, sweet, simple to the point. I want to talk about what I believe and how what I believe kind of informs my thoughts and, and decisions and, and how it's led me to where I'm at now. That way, you know, you understand why it is that certain things matter to me. Um, so, as I've mentioned, I'm a Christian. I do believe in Jesus. I believe in the gospel of Jesus. And so, um, that kind of informs every major decision and every um, life choice that I make. Uh, I, I do everything out of that kind of frame of mind. So um, I think that that's important to know, but while that is the case, I kind of come to conclusions a lot of the times that are a little bit different than a lot of my brothers and sisters would come to, and I'm not a very traditional Christian. Uh, so I don't I don't really kind of get along with the main camps of, of Christian theology. I'm I'm a little off um, from the main camps of Christian theology. But I'm not some like weird heretic or anything like that. And I don't play with snakes. I don't really like snakes that much. They're cool for what they do in the ecosystem, and let's let them stay there. Um, there's a lot of things that um, a lot of Christians either believe or don't believe in, and, uh, we'll talk about that as we cover those particular subjects, such as voting in politics, um, but, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the gospel is going to be the center of everything. It's going to be where I'm going to branch out from, all right, and so what does that mean? Um, well, in the gospel, uh, Jesus is asked, 
he is asked um, what is the most important command that God's given and and so he says what's uh, he says that the most important command is to love God with all your heart soul mind and strength and then he says um, to you're also to love your neighbor as you would love yourself and so this, he says, if you do these two things, you have kept all of the laws and the prophets. Um, and so m my viewpoints kind of come out of that idea. So, you know, if I love my neighbor, which I do, um, I'm going to want what's best for my neighbor. This is what's led me to voting. Um, as far as I'm con I was concerned a year ago, I wasn't going to vote. You couldn't have got me to vote on anything. I wasn't going to do it ever again. It wasn't worth doing. Um, I had a hard time justifying voting um, because of I, I have a hard time from the gospel standpoint associating myself or, or embracing a group that isn't gospel-based. Um, however, uh, please excuse the beep beeps. Those that's my Steam chat blowing up because people are trying to get me to play uh, War Thunder with them. But um, the reality is, is that um, I can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> the reality from what I was saying a second ago, which is of uh, the voting thing, um, I, I felt like as a Christian you couldn't associate with or, or really be a part of a group that wasn't gospel based. Um, where I've kind of changed in my views from that is um, twofold. One, voting for someone isn't embracing them or their views. It's merely saying that you feel that that person would do best in running the country. Now, I've never been somebody for um, like having a theocratic system. I'm not one of those people that wants America to be a Christian nation run by Christians for Christians, and, and I, that's just not. I don't think, okay, I, if you really believe that Jesus and God are all-powerful, and Jesus was here to establish the kingdom, and then he left and he didn't establish an earthly kingdom, you cannot want a theocracy, because he didn't want a theocracy. If he is all-powerful and he is God, then the kingdom that he established is a kingdom that is outside of this world. So, this is, I don't want a theocracy. I don't want, I'm not going to vote on somebody because they're a Christian or not. Um, that's not a big deal to me. Uh, I, so, what I kind of came to the conclusion of, um, and, and this is... Um, well, actually, that's kind of that's kind of I'm I'm gonna digress a little bit because that that kind of gets into to really the next video I have um, about what America is and how do I fit in as a Christian. Um, but um, but I love my neighbor. I want what's best for my neighbor. So I'm going to vote for what's best for my neighbor, or I'm going to uh, I'm going to do what I can to be good a good neighbor. And that's not just like my next door neighbors. They're pretty nice people. I don't really know them well, but they're nice people. Um, my across the street neighbor it happens to be my father-in-law uh he's a really really cool guy he's a nice guy um i want to be a good neighbor to them but I also i just want to love people i want to love just everyone that i come in contact with and i want to uh to to help them so um that kind of brings me into what I, I think love means this is something that i think a lot of people um get wrong uh, love is not some butterfly feeling Love and lust are not equivalent. Sex is not just because of love. Sex happens due to lust. Love is separate. You can love somebody and not be attracted to them, and you can love somebody and tell them no <laughs> to something. You, you know, love is not about making people happy. Love is about doing what's best for somebody, being willing to put their needs ahead of your own. All right? That's the beauty of a love in a, in a marriage right so let's talk about just reality reality is I'm a man most men are interested in just women it's not like we we, we, we we're not penguins you know we're, we're men we're interested in women alright I love my wife so much that I am willing to give up the two or three women <laughs> because I'm not gonna get all the ladies I'm not gonna pretend uh, that might be interested in me and I'm I'm more than happy to to make that small tiny sacrifice so that um so that I can I can be the right husband and the good husband um, that she deserves. Now I I don't I don't think I'm a great husband. I think that I have a lot of work to do. But she thinks I'm a great husband. 
you know and I'm sure there's times she doesn't think she's the best wife I think she's a fabulous wife um, and and she's given up on on all of whatever else she wanted to do to be my wife and I will continue to make sacrifices for her well-being I will continue to be the one that gets the the mad stares when I say no we honey we can't buy that thing we have to pay bills but in the end she's gonna respect the fact that I love her so much that I am willing to take a little bit of that irritation a little bit of that anger a little bit of those cross words just to make sure that our house is running smoothly and that um, we can pay the bills and that I can take care of her because that's what she looks to me for that's what she wants and she does the same thing she does the same thing for me all right she'll tell babe we you can't buy that video game I, I know you want that video game but we have to pay uh, insurance on the cars and we just don't have the money for it and it's a little irritating for for me to have to sit down and go mm-hmm. But in the end, she knows I'm going to appreciate her looking out for us and, and keeping um, her and my best interests at heart. So when you love someone, uh, a good example would be a, a father or a mother to a child. Just because it makes them unhappy for the, the near future doesn't mean that it's bad or that you don't love them. You'll make decisions that are going to make your children unhappy. But one day, hopefully, they'll turn around and look and they'll say, you know what, you made that decision because you cared about me. I can look back at the decisions my parents made. Some of them, I think, are funny. You know, like whenever we couldn't play Pokemon cards or watch Power Rangers. You know, there, it is what it is. They don't have to justify their logic in those things to me. All they had to do was justify it to themselves because they love me and they thought they were doing what was best for me. And I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that they were willing to hear me say, well, that's stupid and you're stupid for not letting me do this. They they bore all that and continued to stick to their rules because they cared about me and they wanted to see me do well in life. Um, so love is much more than just seeing someone happy. Love means that you're willing to be honest with somebody. And that's uh, that's kind of the next point I wanted to make as far as truth is concerned, as far as, you know, whenever I look at something, I say, okay, this is who I'm going to vote for, or this is what I think about this social issue or whatever. Um, I look at it from a standpoint of truth. Truth is super important. We're all going to be a little biased, but you can help cut down on that bias by not having a narrative when you go into something. By not going, oh, well, this must be an issue. I'm going to find facts to support it. If, if, if we would just slow down for a second, if we would slow down and really look at stuff, we, we would, we, without some kind of like crazy narrative to support, we would really be able to see the facts. We would really be able to see what's going on rather than, um, you know, building our our narrative with whatever facts help us and ignoring the facts that don't so um i i think that it's important as far as you know truth is concerned and everything to remember that if you love people if and this is kind of that gospel side if you love people if you love your neighbor then you're going to want to do something you're going to want to be honest with them all right um lying to people or allowing them to lie to themselves especially whenever they have created a narrative um, it, it gives them a false understanding of reality um, and furthers a possibly delusional narrative that they might have created. All right, so a perfect example of this, um, let's say uh, the Dallas shooter. All right, the Dallas shooter, if you look at the tweets and stuff that his family had made, um, you can tell that he's getting this, he has this narrative. Black people are being hunted and subjugated by a white police force. That's his narrative, right? And so things are going on. The media is feeding this narrative. All right, his family and friends are feeding this narrative. They're saying, "Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. That's right. This is really happening. This is going on." And because everybody's feeding the narrative, and nobody's taking a step back to look at the facts of what's going on in his city, or in his life, or or maybe looking at at the best possible solutions to these problems. They're just feeding the narrative. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That this is and, and let's let's be honest. If your people, what you the in group that you have created as your people, when your people are threatened and hunted down, can you really blame anybody when when you 
stand up and, and, and fight back or whenever your people start fighting back if they really think that. And I'm not saying that the the actions were justified. That's not it at all, and I, and I hope that you didn't take it that way. I'm just saying from the perspective of someone who believes that and has had their narrative fed by all of these things, all of these dishonesties, then it's not, a, it's not uncommon and it's not surprising when this kind of thing happens. Um... And so the the last part about lies and honesty is um, not only does it help create or feed a possibly de delusional narrative, um, it ignores the real problems. You know, and and we'll talk about um, like I don't want to get into Black Lives Matter. That is a video for itself, maybe several part video. Um, I, I have very strong feelings about social justice movements and, and issues and so on and so forth. Um, but I can honestly say that if you go to blacklivesmatter.com and read their suggestions for how to fix the problems in the black community, they're not addressing anything that's actually going to help the black community. Not even a little bit. Uh, and, 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 and that, you know, and, and I'll go, like I said, I'll go into detail in a different video about that, but I want to help the black community. I do. I love my neighbor. I want to see them helped. I, I believe the gospel is the best help. I believe that I could say, hey, come into the church. Come into the kingdom of heaven. You'll find justice here. You'll find love here. You'll find acceptance here. Um, I know that there are issues within the church. That's because humans are in the church. Humans screw stuff up. That's what we do. We're very good at it. But the reality is that the kingdom itself has uh, is better. You know? The, the the gospel is better and it's real justice right but not everybody's going to join the kingdom not everybody's going to come be a part of that so i can't just sit in my own small little island and say ah oh, screw the rest of the world we're going to have our own you know our supper whether or not they eat no i'm going to go into the world and i'm going to say hey look not only should you come here but but yeah let's talk about it i care about what's going on in the black community i care about what's going on in the white community i care about what's going on for females i care about what's going on for men i care for what's going on for gay people i want to talk about the actual problems and struggles that are actually faced um, and I want to talk about what people can actually do to try and improve these situations I want to discuss these things look at statistics with people and really work through it alright those are there are real problems everywhere all across the country but I feel like we we're too happy to ignore those real problems to chase fake problems so I, I think that you know I think that if you're if you're lying to people or feeding into these false narratives or or, or just not being honest with with yourself and with other people um, and not really trying to be as objective as possible, then you're really ignoring reality and the real problems that need to be addressed. Um, so I guess I'll go ahead and try to wrap this up. It will be a good, nice little twenty-minute video. Um, and and the last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, truth. I know it's impossible. I've said this. I know it's impossible for anybody to be perfectly unbiased. All right, Everybody's going to be a little biased. But try to be biased towards what is truth. Try to let truth define your narrative. Don't let your narrative define truth. I hear a lot about, well, this is so-and-so's reality. This is so-and-so's truth. Look, reality is reality. If I drop something to the ground, it falls. All right, There's no subjectiveness to that. It falls. And, and so... You can look at reality, and, and yeah, sure, you might have a, a little bit of a different um, experience than somebody else does, that, and that experience might add a little bit into what you're seeing, but, but there should be a matter of allowing your truth to be fi uh, shaped by the truth, all right? I use the same approach with theology. I've had a lot of people that I've watched, they have um, kind of like preordained this is what this means, so I have to read to make everything fit into this box. When I'm reading the Bible, I have to make everything fit within this box. I can't question this box. I have to make everything fit. And so if you, if you approach the Bible with that in theology, and you allow your theology to shape what you're reading, then you're going to get it wrong. But if you allow what you're reading to shape your theology... Then it's gonna. Then the word of, is actually gonna do what it's supposed to do. The Bible's gonna do what it's supposed to do. It's gonna help shape the way in which you see the Lord. And I'd say the same thing about facts. 
when you look at facts, when you look at statistics, when you look at numbers. It's not about being incompassionate or being compassionate. It's about looking at what's actually going on and allowing it to shape your views so that you can say without a shadow of a doubt, I want the very best for people. I want to know the truth. And the truth is going to help me help them. It's going to help people. Lies won't help anyone. But truth sure will. And with facts, you might not be able to get a perfect truth. But you can get something. Something closer than just a pure lie. So um, those are kind of where I come from. That's, that's going to be the way in which I'm going to do my videos. I hope that you like this video. I hope that you stick around. Subscribe. Um, I'm going to be trying to put out a video. Uh, I, I hate to like get in and say I'm going to do a video every day. Um, I would like to do a video every day, but I'm probably not going to be able to. We'll say two or three videos a week at least is what I, is what I'm shooting for. I'm, I'm aiming to put out at least two to three videos a week. Um, right now, it'll be just kind of like giving a basis for what I believe on certain topics, what I think about certain topics. Eventually, it might get into things like de debates. I might actually have little debates between you know local people around my area that that might be interested in debating things. Um, but yeah, if you uh, if you have any questions or you want to know anything uh, about what I think, hit me up. If you're interested in knowing if a certain type of video is coming out, hit me up. I think the next video I'm going to be doing, which will probably be tomorrow or the next day, is going to be what is America and how do I fit in as a Christian. Uh, this is going to be more along the lines of me justifying voting and, and who I'm going to be voting for and stuff like that. Um, how I view the country, how I, how I view the secular country and how as a Christian I, I think I fit within that that mold for that secular country so uh, but anyway um, I will guess I'll see you guys later um, subscribe like comment please comment constructive comments don't just get on there and troll it's it's not really that funny anyway um, but share it with your friends go on Facebook post it up let people know hey check this dude out um, and, uh, and yeah, so I'll see you next time. But this is Colby with Nothing In Studios, and I hope that you all have a wonderful evening, and I will see you guys next time.